As agents, we trick ourselves, create a bunch of scenarios in our head that what is not a lead, we can convince ourselves that it is a lead. All right, guys, thanks for uh, tuning in today. I got another uh, episode of one of these one-on-one -on -one conversations. I brought one of my partners, Robert Ortiz, in. Welcome, brother. What's up, man? Good, man. Um, I wanted to bring you in specifically to kind of, for the people watching out there, shed some light on, on what it's like to go after seller business. There's a lot of agents who work with buyers who want to eventually start going after listings and working with sellers. And I know your focus is, is really going after listings and being more dominant on the listing side. And so I want to openly discuss like what it's like to transition from working with buyers, which a lot of agents do, right? They work open houses, they're doing online leads, whatever it might be. It seems like that's the low hanging fruit, and then what it's like to transition over to the listing side. So maybe, you know, if you want to share any of your journey or yeah. anything that you've gone through to transition more to listings. Yeah, I think I think the first thing that needs to be said is whatever you focus on, and we teach this, right? Yeah. Whatever we focus on and whatever we decide to go after is what we're going to be successful in, right? Yeah. So I think the first step is what I ended up doing was I ended up kind of burning the ships. Now, listen, there's many ways to skin a cat, Yeah. right? But what I felt was burning the ships with the buyer side and just specifically working on seller side mm -hmm. and putting so much faith uh, that it's going to end up working. Got it. So, so I would probably say that would be the first step. And and that same that same philosophy would work even on the buyer side, right? Yeah. In anything in life, right? Yeah. So earlier on in your career, you were working with buyers, sellers, kind of you know, yeah, doing a lot of the different business. And then lately, it's been like just go after listings, go after listings. Was it hard? In the beginning, to say no to buyer opportunities, being that there's a lot of leads coming in, or you have other agents who want to partner with you, like yeah, walk me through some of that. I mean, the beginning was very difficult. You have to remember the easiest lead source right now is is buyers. Mm -hmm. If you sign up for a lead source, if it's Zillow, if it's online leads, it seems like you're going to get an influx of buyers that are coming in. Yeah, right. That's the easy side, in my opinion, to go after. Nothing wrong with it, right? But what makes it even harder is that we live in an area where the average price point is 1.5. Yeah. Right. So it's not unrare for us. It's not uncommon for us to get three million dollar buyers, two million billion buyers. So you have to actually say, you know what? I'm not going to focus on that. I'm only going to focus on it on the other on the on the on the listing side. So yeah, in the beginning it was. It was definitely definitely difficult. Got it. Got it. And what uh what would you say? Like what what's some of the what's some of the reasons you decided just to go after listings more? Like what was it a, from a leverage standpoint or time or like what are, what are some of the things on why you want to mainly just focus on listings? I would probably say the biggest factor for me is leverage. I have a family, you know, as a buyer's agent, mm -hmm. it felt a little bit hard to control my schedule. Mm -hmm. So making it to practices, making it to events, spending time with my family was a little bit difficult because I was always being my, my time was always for my clients, right? Yeah. So what I did was I decided to take my time back by only focusing on the sellers and kind of creating a business. It was a business that I can create with where I'm at right now in life. Yeah. Just dedicating my time on the seller side. Yeah, I, th I think that's that's good perspective because when you do work with buyers, you're mostly showing homes on the weekends, right? Yeah. In the afternoons, in the evenings. And as you, you know, when you started in this career, you didn't have kids, you weren't right. married, all that stuff. And now fast forward well, almost 20 years in the biz, right? It's like life is different now, right? Yeah, 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 life is totally different. So you gotta look at like, all right, well, where am I spending my time? How do I get time back? And I see like, yeah, if, if you're mainly doing listings, well, you can leverage a lot of the admin support, right? right. To handle a lot of those things for you. Even our team, right? Yeah. I mean, we have a team of like 60 agents here. Yeah. I'm fortunate enough just because I'm here that I don't really work by open houses, not because I don't want to, Yeah. but I can leverage a team where they're automatically eager to work the open houses for me, right? Yeah. So that's been a, yeah, time and leverage has been really great focusing on the listen side. Yeah. And I think that's something that a lot of agents need to understand as they build their career. You know, we're going, obviously we're trying to close deals, we're trying to make money, but then you're trading dollars for time also, right? Right. 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 And at some point in your career, you got to say, okay, well, what's more important? You know, time, is it money? Is it a combination of both? Do I build the business in a way where there's leverage, like you said, where you can get some of your time back and still be at your, you know, your yeah. kids' activities or travel with the family or hang out, get your weekends back, right? Yeah, and I think that's, going back to the first question that you asked me, like, what's been difficult with not working with buyers? Yeah. That is, that is the thing, right? Is that you have to make that mental shift to say, hey, listen, you can look at it like I'm I'm not making money on the buy side because it is, you know, when you're when you're dealing with such high price points yeah. or even our average price points, yeah. you are leaving some money on the table, but making that mental switch, I look at it differently. I do look at it more as spending time with my family, the leverage. Yeah, side, right? yeah. And, um, and that doesn't mean you won't like ever work with a buyer, like, but it's more like my focus is go after listings. If some buyers fall on my lap or if oh, it's yeah. a close friend or family or... Yeah. or whatever if you 
collaborate on a deal with another agent, right? Where they're doing a lot of the legwork, right, right? Right. And you're more, you know, doing the consulting side of it. Then you're able to balance the both where you still can close some deals, still get your time back and stuff like that. Right. Um, 100%. Cool, man. So what are you doing to go after listings? So what, what's your, your, your bread and butter right now? I'm a cold caller. I've been a cold caller since the beginning of my career. Yeah. I feel like I have a knack with phones. Yeah. And I honestly love the phones. I, I, I prospect right now, I'm prospecting an average of about four hours a day. Four hours a day. That seems to be my norm. So walk me through your schedule during the day. So well, is my, it in the morning, afternoon, or what do you mainly when you're doing your prospecting? So if you've ever if you ever marketed for four hours, it's a it's a chore. Yeah. Right? Sitting on a chair for four hours is now it becomes a pain. So yeah. now what I do is my morning rituals, my mornings are pretty much nobody gets a hold of me on the mornings. Yeah. Right? Um, even my agents that are here, they don't, they don't, they don't, I don't pick up their calls, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. Now, now you have to remember the reason why I do that is I protect my time. Yeah. So I prospect and I cold call in the morning and I find myself, pro actually, I know I prospect around four or five o'clock yeah. for the, another two hours. Mm. So I try to do two hours in the morning and then two hours at night yeah. or in the evening for a total of four hours. For a total of four hours, yeah. got it. And I can get even deeper if you want as far as- Yeah, I mean, it's. it's I think this is, like this is good for someone who's trying to transition over, right? Or someone who you know, wants to explore the cold calling, circle prospecting, you know, the phone, basically yeah. phone prospecting. This is good insight for them. Um, so what else? What are things that you're looking for? What's your goal for the day when you prospect for four hours? Right? So four hours, uh, 30 contacts. So 30 contacts is what we agreed to. So four hours, 30 contacts. Out of those 30 contacts, I average about maybe two to three good leads, good seller leads. These are people that have met the five criteria that I have. What are um, those? What are the five criteria, more or less? More or less, now you put me on the spot. Okay, so more or less, one of the criteria is they're not working with an agent, okay. right? The second one is that they've allowed me to follow up with them in the future. Got it. Right? The, the third one is there is clear motivation and a clear timeline as far as when they want to do this. Hey, Robert, I'm not thinking about selling now, but I have to move in six months because my job is going to relocate. Me, Got it. Right? So I have to have a time frame. The third one is I have to collect all their information. So they have to have an email. They have to. I have to have phone numbers, and I have to have permission for me to, for me to follow up with them follow down up. the road. Got it. And the fifth one is asking for the business. Like say, hey, listen, I understand that now is not the right time, but at some point when you are ready, mm -hmm. I would love an opportunity to interview for that position as a realtor. Got right? it. Right. So it. those five things have to happen in order for them to go into my CRM, in order for my database where I now have an old, another marketing thing in the background. That got it, got it. So that, uh, I think that's good, man, because you're making it really, really clear on how you grade a lead, a qualified lead, right? Right, right. And, and like, that's the part that a lot of, you know, beginning agents or maybe amateurs still, they still haven't figured out their craft, is they think anybody who says, I'm thinking of selling, like they get all excited, right? Right, 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 right. right. Like they think it's a deal, but you have to go a little further and ask those other questions to make sure, okay, is this someone who's worth giving my time to to continue to follow up? Right. Put them in my CRM and stuff like that. Right? Yeah, we, we as agents, we trick ourselves, right? Yeah, and we yeah. create a bunch of scenarios in our head that what is not a lead, we can convince ourselves that it is a lead. Yeah. So then what happens is that we start to kind of uh, invest time, invest effort, invest marketing dollars yeah. when they're really not a client. Yeah. So if you really go from those five key, those five leads or five characteristics of what I consider a lead to be, yeah. it makes things a lot easier. There's no more, yeah. my mind isn't playing tricks on me. Yeah. I know something's going to happen yeah. at some time. That's good, man. That's right. good. And I think that can apply to not just sellers, buyers as well, right? Yeah. Any, any lead, anything. anything that you do, whether you meet someone at an open house, whether you're cold calling, door knocking, however you choose to go out there and market yourself, right. it, it's that's the top of the funnel, right? You're trying to generate people who are interested, qualify them, and if they are qualified, you're putting them in your CRM, yeah. you got all these different follow-up follow -up tools, systems, yeah. right? Systems that you've built that'll continue to nurture them to, to, to when they're ready. Right, 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 um, right. It's really a, you know, we, we've talked about this, right? You know, offline, it's it's really a, a long-term mentality, right? You're, yeah. Tell me about that. Like you said, I'm building up this pipeline and you talked about earlier in the meeting about like the compound effect and like yeah. taking time, right, to build that, that pipeline. That right there is probably when, uh, listen, I've been doing this for a long time. I, I've I lost count. I'm probably somewhere like 18, 19, 20 or somewhere yeah. in that ballpark, right? But early on, the way that we were taught is that our day was was only successful if we ended up getting an appointment. Yeah. What you have to remember is that is the end goal, right, of what we're looking for, yeah. right? But the business, in a, a business is actually created in the amount of leads that can come in. So if you can sit down in a chair or any or do anything to prospect, mm -hmm. right, 
and you end up getting these three leads that have identified with themselves with those five characteristics, at that point, you're able to build a business, yeah. a predictable business. Yeah. And one of the things that I think people miss out on is the compound effect. It's totally true, guys. Yeah. It took me six months to get a good seller thing going on where now I'm getting calls back on the selling side. Yeah. So, so focus on the first part, which is prospecting, bringing in leads, Right, and then create a structure where these leads that are in there are going to end up growing, which we can we call it a pipeline. Yeah. Right, and that pipeline, if it's taken care of, if you take care of it correctly, should in fact take care of you back. Yeah, if that makes sense. But it does take time, right? Yeah. And it's we even talk about like when we onboard new agents, like it's going to take that first three to six months of you marketing, taking leads, prospecting, calling the database, doing all that stuff to start building that pipeline. And then eventually those people you talked to like three months ago, four months ago, five months ago that expressed interest, right. now they're closer to actually taking some action, right? Right, right. And then boom, if you stay on that and you stay consistent, then they start hitting. Boom, boom, right, boom, right. right. This, guy, this guy buys a house, this guy lists his house, right? And you start getting the escrows going. Yeah. Uh, I, I think that's the biggest thing with new agents that sometimes they kind of fail to see. And it's just because they don't, they don't understand how the business works, right? When you're new to sales, you're new to real estate, there is a lag time that happens. If you ask any new agent where your next paycheck is coming, yeah. they they have no idea. Yeah. But if you talk to a seasoned agent and they're doing the key factors, yeah. the KPIs, yeah. Yeah. right? You, your business becomes predictable. Like yeah. you know where like I have an idea, a pretty good idea of where my business is coming from in the future. Yeah. Right? And future could be one week. I mean, I just got a text right now and we're on the phone right now, right? Yeah. About someone uh, looking to sell their property. Yeah. Right? So, yeah, it just just have a little bit of faith. There's going to have to trust the process. Yeah, yeah. There you go. Just trust the initial process and eventually what's going to happen is going to end up, you're going to become the process at that point. Yeah, I like that. Um, and that's, that's really good insight, man, because we've been doing this for a long time now and there's a lot of agents who are at different points in their career. What I see with agents who have like an up and down business where one month they have a deal and then they have a dry spell for a few months. Right. It's because they stop doing those consistent things every single day, the prospecting, right. the following up, the four hours or two hours, whatever you commit to. They get one client that's interested. They stop doing all those things. They go after this client and then that deal either goes through or it falls through or they change their mind. They come back and they have no right. no pipeline, no momentum. Right? That that's, that's, that's a very good thing. Listen, guys, I've been doing this for a lot of years where I'm still prospecting, yeah. right? So... Fast forward, this is part, this is what we signed up for as salespeople, we're continuously prospecting. Uh, we, there was a point where I was only prospecting for two hours a day. Yeah. That had to be up to four hours a day in order to meet my end goal, yeah. right? So um, yeah, prospecting is, is a lifeblood of a salesperson. Yeah, especially as the market changes too, as the oh, yeah. as it gets harder, more competitive, less inventory, stuff like that. You'll be able to see like, hey, do I have to step it up on the prospecting, right? Yes. There may be certain seasons where you can get away with one or two hours a day because it was easier to get business. Right, 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 right. right. Now it's harder to get business right now. It right? is, it is. We're, we're working, I'll give you a quick example. My open houses are between 11 and 5 o'clock now. Yeah. Where it used to be one to four. That was a standard. Yeah. Right? All my agents are aware that if we're working in an open house, that it's going to be 11 to five. Why? Not because I want them to work. Yeah. Uh, not because I just want them to work more. Yeah. It's because that's just the nature of the beast of the market that we're in. We yeah. have to work more. Yeah, we have to work more. More output. More and, output. We, and we talk about that in our meetings, right? Yeah. It's like there's two ways to, to control your results, right? You either more output, yep. right? Or you increase your skills. Yep. Right. And if you do both of them, game over. Right. If yeah. you got great skills because you're practicing every day, yeah. you're rehearsing, you're training, you're following up, you're in all that stuff, and you're putting a lot of output. Right. Boom. Then your money. Right. You need to get those yeah. results. Yeah. I mean, and, and uh, we go back. We say something here at the office too, where we say control what you can control. Yeah. Right. We can't control the market. We can't control our clients. We can't control our actions. And I think. I think that's a that's a that's a good thing to always recognize that you have to understand that everything is your fault. The moment you understand that everything is your fault, <laughs> like right? You're then at that point you're able to make the changes necessary in order to receive a different outcome, right? Yeah. And that goes back again to control what you can control. Yeah. Right? So I can't control the clients that are coming in, but I can control the output. I can't control how many hours I prospect. Yeah. Right? So if it's if it's gonna take me four hours, just it's the nature of the beast. Yeah. Right? So those are the things that we should focus on as agents, not the other stuff. Yeah. Right? And at that point you make a decision, like, hey, is this something I can see myself doing? Like yeah. if I wanna succeed in this business where it is competitive, 
am I willing to put in four hours a day of prospect, right? Another four hours of doing all the other stuff I gotta do to run my business, right? Yeah. And I think TV shows and all that stuff and what you see on social media, they make it look easy, right? Because yeah, yeah. everyone only shows they're just listed, they're just yeah. sold. They don't show all the work that it took to yeah. get that deal yeah. to come to the surface, right? Yeah, yeah, that, that, that yeah, that is 100% true. I mean, listen, the, the listings that I have right now was from the work that I did three months ago. Yeah. Those the listing appointments that I went three months ago are the ones that I'm having business right now where my contracts are signed and ready to rock and roll. It yeah. takes time, yeah. right? But you have to go into this business knowing that yeah. because it makes things a lot easier yeah. when you know like, hey, listen, I'm going to this next six to eight months is going to be, I'm going to be in the mud every single day. And <laughs> yeah. you have to love being in the mud every yeah. single day, right? Yeah. But eventually the outcome and the results will kind of show themselves up. I like that. Got to get yourself dirty and play in the mud. It's All way. right. Uh, I think that was good, man. I want to thank you again for your time. Uh, I know every time I'm like, Rob, come on, we're going to shoot some content together. It's like, ah, oh, here we go, right? But these are these are really good. Uh, the purpose of, of these episodes is just to be real, like just really show people what it's like to be in our industry, the ups, the downs, the things you got to do, right? Because I feel like the picture that's being painted out there is that it's really easy, right? It's really easy and if you're in this, you know it's a tough business, you know it's hard, and you sometimes, you need to hear from other people, right? Like what's yeah. working, what's not working. We all have common things that we go through, and I feel like ultimately that'll help make an impact on people who are trying to grow their business right now. I 100% agree. Um, how do people get a hold of you, man? Social media, uh, my realtor Rob uh, on Instagram, or you can call me, 408-668-4591. There we go. I I'll be completely honest, I'm just looking for an opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> Rob is a, uh, if, if anybody out there that's, that's, you know, either newer or needs help with the listing side, I know Rob, he's a, uh, he's a leader in our, on our team and he's always helping and giving back and contributing and coaching. Uh, I know if someone called you, you'd be more than happy to coach them. You'd be more than happy to help them close a deal if they needed to go on a listing appointment and stuff like that. And so definitely uh, utilize Rob and pick his brain. Yeah, I'm here. All right, guys. We'll see you next time.